Today is Friday, January, did I say 5th or 6th? 5th. <laughs> so we had a lot of energy in the gym this morning. Um, Will, Travis, and Noah are, well obviously Travis and Noah are always in town, but Will is in town to get prepared for Wadapalooza and the team. Danny Horan's in town doing some evaluation work. We had a bunch of other athletes in town as well. We had Travis and Noah for their first session build to a tough single snatch. Uh, their partner, Will, is in town for Wadapalooza prep, but he's got a job now, so he was working in the morning, and so he sat the morning session out. I uh, put a cap for them to build up to 265 just to get touches on it. Trav's obviously coming off a really good performance in Dubai where he took second, so he had a bunch of off time afterwards, and he's just trying to get a feel for the lifts. And Noah's primary training focus has been run development, getting his body weight down, working on positional stuff for deadlifting, pulling, squatting, kind of setting a foundation for a good training push leading into the games season this year. And we didn't put a real emphasis on the off season competitions for Noah. So the real goal of that session was just to get a touch of some heavy stuff in case a snatch comes out for competition. I think they built up to 265. Travis listened. Noah went up to 275. Travis listened, Noah went up to 275, and uh, I think he missed one for the day and I had just walked out, so I told him not to hit any other ones. So the point of this session is really just confidence building, which is why there was a cap in the lift. I mean, Noah went off script and went for a lift which he thought would build his confidence, but based on where his training was, they didn't actually think he'd make that lift unless he was under the competitive pressure. And really the goal of a session like that, that close to a competition, is literally just to develop a feel for weights around an opener if a one rep max snatch comes out. It's not necessarily to drive up to true maxes. I think a lot of people make that mistake leading into competition competition is that they're trying to hit their PRs out away from a competition so they go into the competition overly confident and feeling really good about their lifts but really the goal is to hit your absolute peak on competition day so you don't really want to like challenge your nervous system to a max level that close to competition generally. Some athletes will respond well to that, but that's usually not what the focus is. The focus is just to try to build some confidence, to limit the amount of misses, to get close to an opener, and just to feel really, really polished in the lift. So that was the real goal of that beginning part of the session for them. Yesterday, a workout from Wadapalooza was announced that had hang cleans, front squats, and jerks in it. And one of the sessions that I had written for Travis and Noah in the morning had clean and jerks in it, and it was a quasi-strength capacity style workout so that they could get used to lifting under fatigue a little bit. Because we got that workout, I made an adjustment to what the AM session was like and, and kept it snatch focused, assuming that now hang cleans, front squats, and jerks are off the table for a max or for even like heavy repeats in a workout that leaves snatch on the table, so I kept snatching in there. So they did 40 cals on the assault bike, alternating 20 and 20, 20 squat snatches at 185, alternating every five, and then 20 cals on the skier each, so 40 total. So it was 40, 20, 40. I want it to be really like high power and really potent because Travis and Noah, Travis is coming off downtime and Noah's coming in off of a training cycle where he really hasn't done that much maximal intensity work and that much Metcon style work. His primary focus was building an off season and building a volume of health and wellness so that he could really take a good peak and a good push leading into regionals. So when you're this far out from a competition, so we're a week out, getting one of those potent, really stressful exposures of maximal effort is just really good to give their brains and nervous system a reminder of what they're gonna have to do on game day so they feel confident if a high power workout comes out that they know how to drop the hammer.
All right, so Trav gets on the bike, try to drop the hammer. It went out of frame, but it says Trevor Mayer up on that, just so everyone knows we don't call him Travis here most of the time. Not that much to say other than he's got some big quads pumping on that thing. But I told him to go out pretty hot, but enough that he can go touch and go. And I told Noah, since he might have a little bit less rest, and because he's a little bit less powerful on that machine, to drop like 90, 95% effort. So in a team style workout, transitions, all that stuff are really important. I told them to tag all the time. I don't remember if they did. Oh, they didn't. Oh, they did. See, that uh, little break right there would have cost them a second or two in competition. Uh, they both asked me if they should go singles because, again, they're individual athletes, so they're used to going singles. And I said, you know, at Wadapalooza, a workout like this gets up, I think you're probably going to have to touch and go and really work on cycling more quickly. So they both tried to. They said they'll see how they feel. You can tell Trav's hurting there a little bit from the sprint. Sprinting into barbell work is really difficult. Um, so they both go five, touch and go here. Trav steps up for his second set after Noah finishes. Let's we'll see what the quality of movement looks like after doing that. This type of power output for Trav right now after a long deload after Dubai is probably a abrupt jump back into intensity, which he's probably not used to feeling since Dubai preparation. So you can tell he's really struggling for these reps. And that last one got a little sloppy, but it was fifth and he knows he's done. So he's running over to the skier. Guys, Noah finishes up. Noah's quality of movement is, I mean, it's just, it doesn't deteriorate under fatigue, which is a great thing as a CrossFitter. Um, so he goes through his five snatches, obviously some technical stuff that we have to work on and we've been working on, but it is looking pretty good. And then they finish out with a real hard sprint. I had them go 20 and 20. I like to give people leading into competitions, these kind of stinger workouts where they really drop the hammer and feel that intense discomfort, but it is uh, short enough that they're not wrecked for days or hours at a time. You know, standing there in my own uh, world, doing movement work on my ankle, uh, thinking, I think I was watching Travis's ski pace. I think it was over 2000 cals per hour. I think it was like 21 or 22 trying to watch and think whether or not Noah would have the same power. We've been working on a lot of cyclical power stuff and a lot of cyclical work, so I want to make sure that knowing Trav's one of the best at that stuff. He won the Dubai workout that had the C2 row, the C2 bike, the row, and the ski erg. So if uh, Noah can keep up with Trav on cyclical stuff, then we know we're moving in the right direction. And I think you can see there he's at 21 to 22 something. Uh, you might be able to see it when you zoom in or tell the audience, but he's uh, dropping the hammer to finish. And... That's God is my witness! <laughs> <laughs> that man skied that Ergen hand! So Danny came on board um, two and a half weeks ago. It was very recent. And so a lot of the stuff that you do with a, a new athlete is evaluation. I don't really know. I mean, we know some some glaring aspects of development that she has to work on and coming up with a plan together about how to do that and how to take somebody who's been really successful in the sport and who's been there four times as an individual is a really difficult task as a coach because it's a really difficult thing to live up to those expectations as people are becoming veterans and they do so many things well. So that was one of the workouts at the games that she felt less confident with. And so the best thing for me to do is to observe that in person. Brandy, as an athlete, needs to get better at uh, repeated squatting and just that high power cyclical turnover style workout. And it was something that she said that she wanted to do leading into Wadapalooza for development. And when Danny came in town last time, they had a good rapport building and Dan and Brandy has been training by herself under me for I think almost six years. So getting the opportunity to push herself against other really elite athletes in the sport is something that we talked about trying to cultivate for her because she really enjoys the competition and getting after it. And then Josh Miller was in town to work with Kyle and he's obviously a great athlete. I don't know specifically about what the 
reasoning for putting him in that specific workout other than just seeing him in the competitive environment together getting after it. And so it was just a workout that was really designed for me primarily to observe Danny and then get Brandy some competitive experience and some of that high intensity breathing for her prep for Wadapalooza. And then Josh jumped in as a third party for it. But it was just a, a good workout to observe as an evaluation for her initial planning, for Danny's initial planning. So later in the day, Wadapalooza is next week and the workout, one of the workouts for the teams and the individuals was announced as a repeat from previous years. It's nine hand cleans, nine front squats, nine jerks, then six, 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 three, 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 and the weights are 290 or 275, 295, 315 for the teams. So we had that workout. We wanted to test it out. They're obviously just one of our many teams going down there. So to be pretty cool weekend for us to go down and actually get some like a real off-season competition and also see some individual athletes in a team style setting which is pretty cool so we sat down and we had a, a long strategy session before that workout instead of putting out our strategy so that a other people can see it and potentially mimic it and b because we thought that it would be a really cool thing to illustrate what an actual strategy session looks like in a training environment and how different that ends up being on game day and whether that strategy actually works. Because we don't know when throughout the weekend that'll be or who's gonna feel good or whether or not somebody's gonna get a tweak or what's actually gonna happen. So we thought it'd be a really cool opportunity to talk about the strategy stuff that happens pre-competition and then how that changes on game day or whether or not it goes according to plan. So you saw some clips of them doing that now from the training session. We're gonna come back in another video and, and show the whole run through and contrast that against what actually happened on game day. <laughs> 